Hi people, Daniel from Devon Sons Guitars here and today I'm going to give you some top tips for daily maintenance on your guitar. So there's two reasons for me making this video. One is because of comments left underneath the setup video that I've made on YouTube. A full setup for your guitar which I highly recommend is something you do every now and then. But today we're looking at sort of daily maintenance and I've just got this guitar out of the storage which is the second reason for making this video. It was the first electric guitar I got when I was 15 or 16. I'd been playing Spanish guitar for a while and wanted to make a switch. It's a Squire Strat. I think it actually plays better than some Fender Strats I played on. Squires in general I think are great quality for their price. Um, they're quite varied what they come like but a little bit of setup when they come out of the factory and they're really good. But this one's got a lot of problems with it. Problems that you might find build up over time but with everyday maintenance you can easily fix. So we're going to have a look at that. I do recommend go and check out that setup video I've made as well because that's something you can work on especially if you're watching this video at the time I'm making it which is during the lockdown for Covid you've got plenty of time to work on your setup. A lot of people are a bit worried about doing a setup and want to take it to a mechanic or an engineer but actually it's not really a problem to do it yourself but this everyday maintenance all of that's very easy to do so nothing that you should worry about definitely the first thing i recommend you do after every time you play is wipe your guitar down um, you could wipe it down with a microfiber cloth like this or a lint-free cotton rag a flannel whatever you want but don't use polish on it just start by wiping it down after the gigs after you're rehearsing just with this the body, the strings, the fretboard, just really to pick up the grime that's come off of you that day. Even if you cleaned your hands, things are gonna come off you and leave marks behind. And a cloth without polish on would absolutely do this. This guitar, like I said, I've had it in storage for ages and I clearly hadn't really looked after it much before then. There's a lot of dust building up. You can see the dust under here between the pickups it's coming away quite easily though just with this even though it's been on there for ages it's just wiping away without any polish now this was my first guitar as i mentioned my first electric guitar and i've done a lot of things on it in the past here look i've just used a permanent marker to color in part of the volume and tone knobs this black on it is some sort of vinyl covering sticky covering that i've put on same on the pickups what i'm actually going to be doing with this guitar is totally stripping it and doing some work on it um videos to come but what i do recommend is you polish it every now and then so I'm using here a bottle of Gibson High Gloss Polish. Now the bottle's got quite ruined because I accidentally left the lid off and had it in a bag and it spilt everywhere and wiped the paint off. Gibson make a range of different polishes, lots of companies do. I will leave links in the description of this video for you to get them from Amazon as with everything like the cloth. Now whenever you've got a polish, this one needs a drip on one, some of them are spray on ones, don't put it straight on the body. Put it on your microfiber cloth first. Here I'm going to put a few drops on and then you can rub that round on the body and I actually think it's fine on the pit guard it's probably fine on this covering I've got on it as well but like I said I am going to remove it and that does bring up the shine a bit but it's excessive to do it every time just a quick wipe down after every play is ideal now here you can see between the strings a real big build up of grime on the fretboard now that's come from quite a long time of me using this guitar and not wiping it down after each clean. Ideally, you want to really clean the fretboard up every time you change strings and maybe put some lemon oil on every now and then, but you don't want to lemon oil your board every time, every day. And if you do wipe it down every day, you won't get these marks like this on your fretboard so quickly. I do think just wiping down your strings after each play is probably enough but it might be worth using something like a string cleaner. Here I've got a Gibson one from the same set as the polish that I've used on the guitar. Just put a bit on a rag. Uh, this is a lint free cotton rag. Just to go over your strings, give them a clean. You can get something called Fast Fret. They're a company that make a range of different things. I've got this Boston Hot Shot which has basically got a felt block on it impregnated with a cleaner like that and you can just rub that over your strings, give it once over after each time you play, just to help keep them a bit more clean and healthily maintained. But like I said, just going over with a, a cloth is really enough to make sure you're getting off some of the grease that's come out from your playing and help give them a longer lifespan. So although I love this guitar, it's just such a great example of things that are broken or 
needs a bit of repair and maintenance. So looking at this volume control, it works properly. It turns and it stops at its extremes. That means when you're playing, you can turn it and know that you're gonna get what you want out of it. Whereas if I turn this tone, I can turn it to one extreme, but then it just keeps moving and it's actually making that tone move as well. And the reason it's doing that is this is not screwed down properly to the body. And when it's turning now to the extreme, the shaft's finished turning and the whole pot underneath the scratch plate is turning. And because it's connected to this tone or the wires are interlinked here, it's pulling that one as well. This could cause the wires underneath to snap. It also means that it's not as responsive when you're playing. Now, the volume controls and tones come off in different ways, but one thing you should always check, I think, when you finish playing, is just that everything on your guitar is tightened and the tones and volumes are the first thing to check. So let's just pull this one off. And what you can see underneath is the whole of the nut there is loose. So there's different ways to tighten it. You can get these tools, which I think are quite good, that just clip around the bolts, the nuts, sorry, and help tighten it. Um, they are, if you buy the cheap ones, they can be a bit risky because these bits on the edge could be sharp and scratch your guitar. So it might be worth filing just the edges so there's a bit of a chamfer on them so they're a bit smoother. But as you can see, that will lock into any size nut and turn it. I'm gonna hold the shaft when I turn it to make sure that the pot's not moving underneath. So I turn the shaft to its extreme here and then keep turning with this. Another option I use is I've got this from a wrench set. It just fits over the top and fits onto the bolt to help turn it. Or you could just use a simple pair of pliers. It's quite hard to do at this angle with the camera. But again, I'm turning the shaft all the way this way clockwise. Then I'm going to keep turning the, the nut around it. And now I know this is nice and tight. So when I turn it to the extremes, the pot underneath is not moving and this one's not moving either. You might want to check things like this, your control, your selector switch aren't loose, that's just simple for screw to connect to tighten here. Next we can go on to one of the things that's most likely to be loose and on this one it is, what a surprise, the input jack. Now your input jack obviously gets used all the time because you're plugging your leads in and out of it and that can cause this to come loose and that is definitely worth checking. On some guitars, particularly this one like on the Strat, where the input jack's quite hard to reach with pliers. It's a bit harder to tighten, but it's still possible. And what can happen, in fact, this happened to a friend of mine very recently, her input jack came loose and fell down inside the body of her guitar, which meant having to take the whole scratch plate off to access it. With this one, it's just a matter of unscrewing this to access the input jack. Some guitars might have it around the side of the guitar, like on a telly or something like this. Now, one quick tip for a way to adjust it to tighten it is to put your lead back into the jack and that will help you hold the inner part of the jack so you can now just access the nut around the edge and then here I've got quite fine pliers and I can turn it without risk of scratching the rest of the input jack panel here and then back at this angle if I take the lead out now we can see that it's nice and solid. That's definitely something you want to check every time. Another must to check are your strap pins. The reason I think it's a must to check is, depending what straps you're using or clip locks you're using or maybe you're not using any, is you're taking your strap on and off all the time. So this has a lot of pressure put on it every time you do that, which means that it could come loose. So this one's nice and tight. I have had a clip lock strap, clip lock strap, clip lock strap on before, which would mean that it should be nice and tight on here with no risk of the strap coming off when I'm playing. But whilst I was playing, the strap pin actually came loose from the guitar because this screw had been loose for quite a while and I hadn't noticed and it just slowly wobbled its way out. Because it was loose, the movement was causing it to shake quite a lot and it caused the hole to become a bit wider than it should be. Whereas if it was tight all the time, it wouldn't have had that vibration and that shaking and the screw would have been nice and tight. So always check this. Here we can see that on this guitar, each saddle has got two screws on it. They adjust the height or the action of the string. 
Now, each guitar is going to have a different setup, so it might not always have two screws like this on it. But if it does, it's worth just checking with your th finger or pushing down on the saddles to check they're not loose. Because what can happen, it's not that common, but what can happen is when you're playing your strings a lot and all the vibrations happening on your um, bridge is these saddle screws can start to come loose and if they come loose it can cause the saddle to wobble a bit which can cause tuning issues or playing issues definitely worth checking but you don't need to actually put your allen key in and tighten or change the screws every time because that would be changing your action and I think I mentioned already but I have got a long setup video explaining how to change the action and the string height which I'll link to below but you do want to check they're not coming loose and if they are just give them a slight tighten to try and make sure especially when there's two here it's probably likely only one's come loose so you can just make sure that the saddle is level but again if you do end up finding that is a problem you might need to go and do a whole setup at least on the bridge and whilst we're on the bridge thing I should mention is if you've got a tremolo bar because you've got a floating bridge or some sort of whammy bar on it it might be worth taking that bar out at the end of each time you play if you're going to be putting your guitar in a bag or case because anything that's going to apply pressure to that bar and therefore move the bridge is going to start affecting the springs so once you take it out of the bag or the case again you might find your bridge isn't going back to exactly the same place it was when you last played it which would mean a new setup or tune up every time so yeah just take it out if you're going to be putting it in a bag or case Something that I always think is worth checking is the machine heads or the tuning pegs. Um, these ones are screwed on with two screws on the back, as you can see here. And I would always just check that the tuning pegs, machine heads, aren't loose or moving in any way. If they're loose or moving in any way, you might want to just tighten up the screws, check they're nice and tight. Basically, if it's moving and slipping, it could potentially be causing problems when you're tuning. If this is moving and the shaft is moving, then where the string enters the shaft on the other side, it's going to be in flex when you're playing your strings and you don't want that to happen at all. Just switching for a moment to a different guitar, this is one of the skull and crossbone guitars that I've made, hand painted, hand sculpted. And what you can see here is that the bushels of the tuning pegs, unlike the ones on my other Squire Strat, actually have nuts around them. Now you want to make sure these are tight and not loose. One reason you want to make sure they're tight, I can feel with my fingers these are tight, um, otherwise I might use that tool again. Um, one reason you want to make sure these are tight is so that the shaft isn't slipping at all and giving so that when you're tuning there's no give at all. But also, if it starts getting loose, the washer underneath can get loose. And if the washer underneath is loose when you're playing, you might get some rattling on your guitar. And you don't want that at all. These also have, well, these ones have got skulls on them, but like a lot of tuning pegs, they have a screw. I don't know how well that comes up on the camera. A screw just here. And you also want to make sure that's tight, because if that's not tight, then when you're turning the head of the tuning peg here, it might turn independently of the shaft and the gears because it's loose and that will give you a less responsive turn when you're turning and tuning your guitar. Right, well thanks for watching. Don't forget this was a video with just a few tips of everyday maintenance but for a full setup of your guitar I've made another video and I do recommend you watch that because although you don't need to your setup as regularly as the daily maintenance it is something worth doing every six months or so and it's something that a lot of people worry about doing themselves but actually most of it is pretty straightforward and hopefully my video will make that really clear for you. I've got lots of other videos with similar things that you can do to your guitar to help improve its playability so do like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also find me on other social medias like Facebook and Instagram. I also sell merchandise like this top, this jumper um, over on my Redbubble site so if you want to support me in some way that would be great otherwise you can get in contact and maybe buy a guitar from me. I sell them through my website and Facebook and various other sites and also take commissions. In fact, my favourite thing to do is work with people to help them design an ideal guitar and really the more wacky the better. I'm going to be doing this guitar up in fact so if you stay tuned over the next few weeks I will start uploading videos of me changing this in some way 
basically I think I'm going to turn it into a Shattercaster, which until now are the bass guitars I make with shattered broken mirror embedded in them. I think this is going to be the first sort of the prototype guitar in, in that, that sort of style. And also because it was my first ever guitar, I don't really want to get rid of it. So it's going to become hopefully my everyday playing guitar, the one I jam on and rehearse on and maybe use for some demos every now and then. It's also got to be really good if it's going to be that. So I'm going to try and get the best finish that I can. I'm going to try out some different components and colour combinations. And like I said, I'm going to make videos of them. One last thing, do check the comments of this YouTube video because quite often people will leave tips and tricks that they've picked up along the way or learnt from other guitar players that you might find useful. And if you've got some bit of advice for everyday maintenance that I haven't mentioned, please also leave that in the comments for future viewers. Those sort of tips are invaluable and this is the perfect place to share them. Anyway, until next time, happy strumming.